is a winter wonderland in beautiful Bozeman, Montana for this FCS semifinal between Montana State and South Dakota State. Right on in to Bobcat Stadium. The winner gets to go to Frisco to play North Dakota State. Here comes Montana State, the lowest seed to ever host an FCS semifinal. The Bison beat James Madison last night. They await today's winner. South Dakota State was in that game just seven months ago trying to get back there. With the College Football Hall of Famer, Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Alyssa Lang is on that field. You'll see her in just a second. We have breaking news. Isaiah Afonzi, Montana State's great running back, is not playing today due to an accumulation of knee pain that he sustained throughout the season. So that means Montana State's true freshman quarterback, Tommy Malott, it's all yours. And you knock about the fact that he doesn't have a ton of experience. He's only started since the playoffs have begun. But because of the injury at running back that they've just incurred, one of the top rushers in the FCS in Afonsi, you've got a guy that accounted for five of the six touchdowns versus Sam Houston State and Tommy Malott. Now he's going to have to carry an even heavier load as a runner. We've seen him throw for touchdowns, catch a touchdown last week, rush for two of them. Now he's going to have to get even more carries in a very run-heavy offense. About 65% of the play calls for the Montana State offense stays on the ground. Number 16 is going to have to play a very prominent role. He's been gashing them in the playoffs. The Jackrabbits of South Dakota State are at full strength. No health issues for their team coming into this game. They got to the championship game seven months ago, but they've had some bumps in the road since then, Stench. Yeah, you can tell, obviously, all season long. Didn't always have a healthy stable of backs. They do today, though. Isaiah Davis, Pierre Strong, an excellent one-two punch. Strong, strong runner outside, a perimeter-type space player. Davis, more downhill, more physical. They want to impose that rushing offense on one of the best rush defenses in Montana State here today. How do they get back to Frisco? For more on that, let's go to the field and Alyssa. No shortage of motivation for South Dakota State today, guys. As you mentioned, playing in a championship game just eight months ago, they fell in that game 23-21, the final, a score still imprinted in their minds, but that's not the only place. Coach Stig had these t-shirts made up that he gave his players after that game with the score listed on them, reminding them that every day, every practice, every workout could get you back to that moment. They've embraced that, but that's not the only source of motivation coming in. Chris Oladokun, the quarterback, told me they assumed they'd be unseated knowing they lost three regular season games. But once it happened, once they knew they were going to have to go on the road throughout the playoffs, it motivated them even more. They do feel like they're the best team in the country when they're playing their best football. Now one win away from going back to that championship game. Alyssa, his team has won the toss. They have deferred. Montana State will receive. This is the 16th meeting between these two schools dating back to 1956 when they played three hours north of here in Great Falls, Montana. Bobcats lead the series 10 to five, but the Jacks have won the last three. And like Stinch told you, Montana State coming out there on the field with the true freshman quarterback, Tommy Malott, Last week against the number one seed in the playoff, Sam Houston, he did it all. You can see the numbers, obviously, as a passer. They're going to want to get him going on the ground. A little bit different role for him in this game, knowing that the inside runner in Afonzi not available. Malat was more of the pull read, get the ball on the perimeter. Now he is going to be more between the tackles type running, something that's different for the Bobcat offense. With Afonso out, Elijah Elliott is in, and he takes the first handoff of the game, and another freshman, he gets three on first down, and Logan Bacchus, we'll call his name a lot today, makes the tackle, second and seven for the Bobcats. That is a big blow to your offense, Matt, to not have Afonso, who has been sensational this year. Well, you look at the amount of production that he's provided for this offense, nearly 120 yards 
on the ground. And as much as the Bobcats like to keep it in the run game, you're going to have to do it by committee outside of their quarterback and Tommy Malott. Lance McCutcheon leaves the backfield. He's to the near side. Malott throws to him first down up near the 40-yard line. Coming into this game, Tommy Malott had attempted 35 passes. That's it. And yet, when you go with the football in the air, it's oftentimes towards Lance McCutcheon. That's key in this game. Let that defense see the passing offense, and especially to get an early completion for your young quarterback. Again, McCutcheon leaves the backfield right before Malott snaps the football. And in that empty backfield, Malott running, keeps it, and he's ahead past the 45 for six more. Stench, you said they have to have the threat of throwing the football today to keep that Jacks defense honest. Well, you can see now twice they motion to an empty backfield, pulls a defender, out of that defensive box. So because it lightens up the number of defenders, if there's nothing downfield that you like, take off and run, and you see the play distribution. Heavy, heavy run, 66% of the time. They're trying to keep it on the ground already here today, a completion, and then another attempted pass with the scramble. You saw Brent Vegan, the head coach, just a moment ago, wanting to keep that defense on us. Here's the design run call, and it's a first down. Well, it's right at the sticks, yes. They give him enough into Jack's territory. First down, Montana State. And in this game, you can tell, look, there's not a ton of wear and tear on Tommy Malott. True freshman, seen spot duty. Really, the Idaho game is where he came on. Started to really click in this offense. A guy that they knew probably in the back end of the season, they were going to go with him. But he's a new face. They didn't play in the spring season. And so they had to introduce him into this offense. He was blocking, he was tackling, playing other roles. Now here today, we've seen him as a passer and a runner already early in this offensive possession. This fake to Elliott, Malott keeps it, mistake made, and it's a loss back to the 48. Adam Bach, the terrific sophomore linebacker with the tackle for loss. A great job of getting in the offensive backfield quickly. Box one of those guys, as is Isaiah Stahlberg. The quick trigger guys, Bach is incredibly active in the middle of the defense for the Jackrabbits. Came into the game with 119 total tackles. That time, Malott had a third option. It looked like to swing it out wide. Instead, he ended up eating the football. Malott throws on the run it's a good ball to McCutcheon and it's another first down oh they say incomplete didn't hold on to it through the process of falling to the ground third and 13. heavy play fake you get Malott on the run and you see it rolling to his throwing arm side that's a well-placed football McCutcheon could have come up with this catch well defended Don Gardner came in there breaking late. And it was just enough to keep McCutcheon from coming up with a big catch on the boundary. Montana State 41% on third down this season. Malott pumps. And he's ahead, but just past the 45 yard line. Down to the 44 to be about fourth and five here. We'll see if Coach Vegan elects to keep the offense on the field. It looks as if he's going to kick it away, but it's interesting on that scramble drill, Taylor. They were a little bit stagnant in the secondary. Those receivers, you need to work back to your quarterback. That time a lot scrambling to his left. You have to mirror your quarterback. If you're deep, you come shallow. If you're shallow, you run deep. Instead, nowhere to go with the football. No wind at the moment here in Bozeman. There's a threat of some snow in the second half. Bryce Layton's punt is fair caught by Jackson Yonke at the 11 yard line. What a beautiful scene this is in Bozeman with the championship looming.
in the Fargo Dome in North Dakota. Hunter Lipke had 199 all-purpose yards, two touchdowns, including this one. Bison was up, but very late in the game, an interception. How about this? Dustin Talbert with the one-handed grab to preserve the victory. They did have one last Hail Mary chance. Couldn't even get the ball out. The Bison are headed back to Frisco after beating JMU last night. 12 straight playoff appearance seeking their ninth championship in the last 11 years. If you're gonna play in Texas, you better bring the Bison to Frisco. Isaiah Davis and Pierre Strong are both in the backfield and there's already a motion issue for the Jackrabbits. Offside, defense number 44. And that goes against the defense there with Drew Myers, today's referee, with the call there. That's against one of the best pass rushers in the FCS, Daniel Hardy. Yeah, it's just a simple motion, right? You know, Daniel Hardy, obviously, you can tell, is wound tight. One of the better sack masters at the FCS level with 14 coming into this game. And two of the best tailbacks in the country in the backfield, Ola Doken throws, and on the run, it's Jaden Yonke with the catch. He is past the 30 yard line up to the 32. It is a pickup of 15 yards. So both of these run oriented offenses, getting the ball in the air early. Ola Doken, a guy that hasn't been asked to do a ton. He can obviously pass better than what they had at QB in their spring season. They like what he's brought to the passing game, but they do not lean heavily on the passing attack. It's 84 degrees where Ola Dokens from in Tampa, Florida. It was near zero this morning, and Pierre Strong on the handoff gets two up to the 34-yard line. Ryland Ott on the tackle, and, and Ryland Ort, excuse me, is going to play a big role in this game. Ty Okada from Montana State, unable to play today. So, so Ort, the redshirt freshman, is in there taking his spot. And the goal for South Dakota State is to see if they can't motion to where they can get Callahan O'Reilly, number 47, usually a box player, to be that space player as he is right here. Ola Doken throws near side, nice catch made, and it's a first down by Yonke again. And again, Jaden and brother Jackson, we'll see them catch a lot of balls today. The twins from Madison, South Dakota, two of the best at this level. How about the passing game early now for the Jackrabbits offense? You get Ola Doken er going early. You see some of the trades and motions that they're doing pre-snap, see if they can get the alignment that they want. But right now, Ola Doken, Starting off with a nice rhythm in the passing game. Makes the handoff over the middle, wide open is the big tight end, Tucker Kraft. Kraft is inside the 30, down to the 29. It's a pickup for 25 for one of the best tight ends playing FCS football. Tucker Kraft, he fits in at any level of football especially collegiately, you're looking at this guy. He looks the part, he plays the part, physical at the point of attack, an excellent receiver in the secondary. And this is a program that had Dallas Goddard, who he's further along than Goddard was through his first two seasons. Looks like he's a bit banged up, may work on his left arm a bit. Yeah, separated shoulder maybe if he fell on the point of that left shoulder. Oladokun turns and hands to Strong. There's the big hole. Pierre's inside the 20, and he's down near the 15-yard line. The senior from Little Rock, Arkansas, the All-American for 13 more. Nice push up front. They're able to climb up to the second level. Did a good job there at the line of scrimmage. This is an offensive front at South Dakota State. Offensive coordinator and play caller Jason Eck, also the O-line coach. They take pride in how they play up front. Will challenge the Montana State Bobcat defensive front all game long, especially in their rushing attack. Michael Morgan going in motion. Strong tries to follow him, but right there is Callahan O'Reilly 
to make the tackle. The Bobcats defense has been stingy once the opponents have gotten inside the red zone, only allowing one red zone touchdown the last four games. Just phenomenal in this area of the field, a condensed space. But the challenge is, of course, you're facing an offense that's very proficient in the ground game, despite the passes that we've already seen early. That time, Callahan O'Reilly did a great job identifying quickly to make that tackle. Isaiah Davis joins Pierre Strong in the backfield. Ola Dokin in between them. He'll throw again. He escapes the pressure and he slides down inside the 10. He'll be marked down at the nine. That's where he gave himself up. It'll be third and short from there. And the pressure, if it doesn't get there, he had Jaden Yonke breaking right in the middle of the end zone. Just behind the linebacker level. We've already seen excellent job Oladoka at that time using his legs to extend a play. Now you're facing one of the best rush defenses in the country in Montana State, but right now that offensive front's done a great job of generating push. And right now you look at it, only two receivers out wide. Davis behind Oladokun. He gets the carry, and he's right near the marker. Trey Webb on the tackle, but I think Davis's extra effort might have been enough. It's going to be close. They're going to say short by maybe the length of the football. Thought maybe Davis's extra effort might have gotten him the spot. It did not. But Coach Stigelmeyer keeps the offense on the field. You can see he tried to bounce that run to the backside. Met almost right away. And now testing the metal of the Bobcat defensive front. Can they hold up? It's Ola Dokin giving to Davis, and he is stoned. Troy Anderson on the tackle, and one of the best players in Bobcats history gives the football back to the offense. We talked about the red zone defense, but defense for the Bobcats starts and stops with Troy Anderson. He does it all, and he couldn't have come up bigger in that moment. A huge red zone stop for Montana State. Going back to that big stop by the Bobcat defense, and what they did was they had three bigs, the inside lineman, you see that three defensive linemen, guard to guard, are all covered up. That allows Anderson to play free. You see the edge defenders, they play inside gaps, 15 at linebacker. Watch him scrape over the top. That's what forced Davis to have to bounce that run. He wants to get downhill, and instead he has to force it outside, right into the waiting arms of Troy Anderson. Gives the football back to the offense, and Malott one hops it to McCutcheon. It'll be second down. And, and to your point about Anderson, I mean, this guy was one of the best offensive players in school history. He was 10th in school history in rushing with over 2,200 yards. And now he's had nearly 200 tackles in two seasons since switching from the offense to the defense. He has 25 and a half tackles for loss in just two years. Doesn't matter where you put him, Stinch. He makes a difference. And he makes an impact on either side of the ball. In fact, they're even speculating if we'd see him on offense and may still in goal line scenarios. Malott hands off to Elijah Elliott, and Elliott gets ahead to the 12. Again, if you're just joining us, Isaiah Afonze, the top tailback for Montana State, who has a set the single season rushing record last week, rushing for over 1,500 yards this season, is unavailable due to chronic knee pain. And that means a stable of backs will have to try to replace him today. Malott in trouble, gets out of there. This is what he does best. First down, Montana State, and much more. That can be so disheartening to a defense. You're sitting there right, coverage, nowhere to go with this football downfield. But because the defenders' backs are turned to the line of scrimmage, Malat does a great job of escaping in the pocket and picking up a huge gainer to get off his own goal line. Ball start. Offense number 80. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Trayton Pickering 
tight end moving early. That was a 21 yard gain for Malott. There's Brent Vegan, head coach, 45 years old in his first season, best first season in school history at 11 and two, came over from Wyoming in January when Jeff Choate left to work for Steve Sarkeesian at Texas. Malott again, and he lost the football, and he got it back. It bounced right back to him. What a huge break for the Bobcats there down near the 35. Even after it bounced right back on top of him, it looked like maybe Don Gardner for South Dakota State was going to be able to come up with this football. What a fortuitous bounce from a lot because this ball is out. See so it get hatcheted out and it bounces right back to him. In fact, if he doesn't, as he's rolling over, kind of corral that football with his left arm, it's probably laying on the turf. I mean, that's like when I hit a tree left of the green and it bounces right on the green 10 feet away. Easy birdie. <laughs> yeah, you do that on purpose. I mean, that you? was the ultimate fortuitous break. Can Malott make the defense pay? He throws over the head of a wide open McCutcheon. Third down. You see the play action in the backfield. Pretty good job of holding up in protection, but you can also see that, you know what, this is a guy, true freshman, spent a lot of time running the football and also back-to-back -back carries. You also want to come back throwing that football. Did that have an impact on that throw with just fatigue? Now on third and seven, Malott lofts one, one-on-one. -on -one. It's caught by Nate Stewart. Stewart's off to the races. It's a touchdown. 64 yards. Nate Stewart, the graduate from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, transfer player from Akron. I think he might have gotten a break here. The extra point by Glessner is good. It is 7 0 with 3.28 to go. In real time, Stinch, it looked like Stewart might have been shoved out of bounds. We'll talk about this in just a second. His left foot. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Bobcats on top. It is beautiful here at Bobcat Stadium as it is a raucous crowd. It's warmed up, but overnight it was below zero. A lot of snow in the last couple of days. And if you're not used to driving a car in this weather, <laughs> you can get it stuck. I'm talking to you, Kevin Maloney. So I had to come to the rescue and put this thing in reverse. Look at Alyssa Lang and Russ and Kevin Maloney. Put Stitch, you're just directing offensive linemen. And you, your playing days are over, evidently. Yeah, you kidding me? I'm retired. <laughs> uh, if y'all want to push the car, go ahead. I don't know why you're pushing a car that's rolling on its own. Yonke from the goal line. He's got space. Arm tackle to no avail. Back to the 44-yard line. Now, Stinch, in real time, Nate Stewart, you could see it. He went out of bounds, but it's okay because he was shoved out. Exactly. Malik Lofton in coverage. He forces him out of bounds. See his left foot right there on the boundary. Side judge drops his hat, but you're allowed to do that. Now, if he leaves the field to play willingly, that would be an illegal touching. Instead, he was forced out of bounds because of the defender. Therefore, it makes him a legal catch and a huge play. You scramble off your own goal line, you get a big red zone stop, and the Bobcats able to capitalize on that momentum. Jack Rabbits got inside the 10, turned it over on downs on a fourth and one. Nine plays, 79 yards, no points. Oladokun turns, hands to Strong. Pierre 
is past midfield to the 49 to the field and Alyssa you can tell that these two running backs Pierre Strong and Isaiah Davis have so much love for each other they said they call them thunder and lightning though they didn't seem too hot on that nickname TBD if they could come up with something else we asked him what some of the keys were offensively for them to get this win Pierre Strong emphasized no turnovers we have to have good ball security because this deep in the playoffs the margin for error is so small typically the team with less turnovers is going to win the football game well, so there's no doubt about it but you count that red zone stop as a turnover right now and it's strong who's got the first down to the 45 yard line troy anderson makes the tackle not but not before strong who got dinged up last week in the first drive of the game was able to get the first down he did clear concussion protocol passed every test we visited with coach stigelmeyer before the game and he said that pierre could carry the football as much as he ever could coming into this yeah one. he felt really good about his running back room and you can rest assured number 20 and number 22 for south dakota state i see plenty of number 15 of montana state today. oladokin dumps it off nice catch made by morgan but all world linebacker Boy, troy okay, anderson is everywhere he's just such a smart football player started out his career as we mentioned quarterback he's even punted as a bobcat but in this game they wanted him to focus his linebacking duties and already he has definitely paid dividends one of the best defenders in all the fcs second and nine it's a handoff to strong and strong makes a man miss and he's got daylight pierre strong touchdown 44 yards is his 40th career touchdown and great blocking on the edge to get him to pass the line of scrimmage but what a move he throws on trey webb trying to come up and run support see number two for montana state lose his footing pierre strong cuts inside takes it to the house goal from's extra point ties it up and after south dakota state is unable to score inside the 10 takes a punch on defense they punch right back with their all-american the fcs leading rusher pierre strong well that's the lightning you know they said they don't like it thunder and lightning whatever the lightning came in handy right there a streak down the sideline and compliments to the big guys up front and the edge the perimeter blocking was outstanding to get him upfield one of the most experienced runners in the game the NCAA FCS champion will be crowned January 8th in Frisco, Texas on ESPN2 at 12 Eastern. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. That'll be fun three weeks from today on this very network going on at this very same time. Remember, the Jackrabbits are the only team to beat the Bison this season. And, of course, Brent Vegan, the head coach at Montana State, is one of the best Vigan players and assistant coaches in program history, so there'll be great storylines no matter who wins this one. Elijah Elliott from the two. Tackled at the 15-yard line. They say he was down and whistled at the 16, so Elijah, all this running is for naught, my friend. I, you know, I, I, but I don't, you're right. The whistle was blown. Bobcats, of course, did not play in the spring. Brent Vegan becoming the head coach, losing to the team he used to be with in the season opener in a great game. A nine-game winning streak. Then they lost to their arch rival, the Grizz, in the final regular season game. They make the quarterback change, going from Matt McKay to Tommy Mallott, and the offense has gone off in the playoffs beating the number one seed sam houston last saturday night in texas shahari martin the fake to him Malat wants to load up one-on-one -on -one for mccutcheon got him <laughs> 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 
We asked Brent Vegan in the pregame. We're going to see some shots early in this game. You got to wonder if the defense is expecting just heavy run the whole time. It's the 50-50 balls that South Dakota State was concerned about. They hit big ones versus Sam Houston State. And now a big one early to McCutcheon for 40 yards. Beat Don Gardner to get the ball into South Dakota State territory. Design run for Malott. And look at the lateral quickness there by Gardner and Logan Bacchus. You got to give Gardner a lot of credit. Gets beat on a deep ball and immediately tackles Malott at the line of scrimmage on the next play. Comes right back, makes a nice play. Bacchus really made that play possible. Did a good job of forcing Malott to bubble his run. And Gardner, who was in position on that ball, he just got boxed out by McCutcheon, who's got that big body at 6'3", 200 pounds. At the one corner, surprised at the amount of passing we've seen. But right now, the Bobcats driving on the arm of Tommy Mallott. In frozen Bozeman, Montana, we are tied at the end of one in one of the biggest home games ever at Bobcat Stadium. Come on back for the second quarter. day to run down the mountain the bridgers in the background yeah there you go come on pup right up to the camera seven seven in snowy bozeman as we get ready for the second quarter in this fcs semifinal. montana state the home team has it just past midfield on the second down and their true freshman quarterback tommy malott is stopped in the backfield by Reese Winkleman for a loss of one. It'll be third and long. I got to tell you, Stinch, there are great backdrops all over college football. You think about the Rose Bowl, go up to Berkeley with that beautiful backdrop in the Bay Area, the enormity of SEC stadiums with the Bridgers in the background, these mountains. I mean, Bobcat Stadium, it's got to be on your list, the most stunning backdrops in college football. A fantastic setting and a packed house here tonight more than capacity we've got to bring in seating for this ball game on third and ten Malott throws short and it's caught at the 40 yard line a flag comes in as the ball is caught by Nate Brian Stewart it could be a roughing penalty on the quarterback a late the hit roughing the passer defense number 91 15 yard penalty Xavier Ward with the late hit here, and Malat is still moving around slowly. Well, he got hit pretty good on the touchdown throw to Nate Stewart earlier. Watch at the end of this play. C91 Xavier Ward, yeah, takes the shot, went up high. Pops Tommy Malat, and you have to know, the head referee, the white hat, He's responsible for that quarterback, especially after that ball's out of his hands. You're going to draw a penalty on that. Malat stays in, but moved rather slowly the last 30 seconds. He's got Elijah Elliott and Jahari Martin to each of him, each side. And it's Elliott following blockers. Great lateral closing speed by Bacchus. It'll be second down after a pickup of three. You know, when talking with Jimmy Rogers, defensive coordinator, he's talking about Bacchus, and watch how quickly he covers ground right here. Diagnosis quickly. Look at that lateral quickness and speed for him to close. This was a well-blocked play on the perimeter. He was the backside linebacker to make that play in space. That ankle that he's been playing on that was dinged up early in the year seems like it's healthy here today. Over 300 career tackles for him. Elliott makes one man miss. Runs into people down near the 18-yard line. It'll be third down. Montana State gets back into the red zone against South Dakota State. And again, the big story coming into the game, Isaiah Fonzi, terrific tailback for Montana State, not playing today due to chronic knee pain. Possibly could be back in three weeks for the national championship game. Elliott, Martin, Hosey, and the quarterback, Malott, 
carrying the mail today, and it's the quarterback here who goes right near the first down marker where he's tackled at the 16-yard line. Yep. Looks like he is just short. And you know, Taylor, with that play call, you have to think he was already thinking four downs right there. He went heavy formation to the right, and they are. Right back, now he's under center on this snap. Watch the sneak. He clings into guys, and he does get to the 15-yard line. Let's wait for the white hat. There it is. And the Jackrabbit defense was ready. They saw it. You know, they were quick to the ball. And under center for Tommy Millot. But the Jackrabbits were ready. So look, they're all covered up. Adam Bach is right there. And he stuffed initially. It was that second effort. I don't know. It might have been wow. a favorable spot. I'm not sure he got to the line to gain. That ball, his back was to the line of scrimmage. It was free play. They blow it dead. False start. Offense wide receiver number 10. By the Hickman, remains first down. That's why it was blown dead, and it wasn't a free play. Nate Stewart moving too early you know when you see a wide receiver jump off sides is when he's expecting the ball i can promise you it's never because they're getting ready to block so see him at the bottom of the screen watch stewart a little bit early looked like there was movement inside yeah yeah by south dakota state on the line but they get stewart outside a lot a little rattled by that jackrabbit front at the moment now first and 15 on a zone read he gets back near the original line of scrimmage where michael griffin the all-world safety makes the tackle second and ten you see him a lot we talked about it earlier he's going to have to be the central part of this thing a guy that didn't get a start until the postseason Obviously a buy in the first round because of that eight seed. Able to just get back to that original line of scrimmage on that last run. Sixth ever quarterback to play for the Bobcats that's from Butte, Montana. One on one to the end zone. McCutcheon is out of bounds. The, can the cannons go off, but it's incomplete. The heck of a catch. Just not a reception in this one. Comes up with it. Working against Don Gardner again. And he's going to be a mismatch because of his length at 6'3". You can understand why they repeatedly try on those 50-50 throws to the boundary when he's man up in coverage. Tenth play upcoming here. Got to get near the five-yard line. Malat pumps. Pumps again. Gets the edge. And he's down at the 10 before the spin and the dive. It'll be fourth and goal from there. And here comes the kicking team. Key stop. Big stop by the Jackrabbits. Kay Trevere able to retrace. Great job. See him right at the boundary, number 94. Great hustle to keep him from getting the line to gain. Right there, he's out of bounds and right foot, right before he initiated that spin move. Blake Glessner to give Montana State the lead back from 27 yards, right through there. The winner gets the Bison. In three weeks in Frisco, Brent Vegan would love to play his alma mater. Graduation was yesterday here in Bozeman. You know what? We 
seen some incredible grads play for these two teams through the years kicking footballs. You could argue the two greatest kickers ever, Stinch. I mean, at any level. Adam Vinatieri, South Dakota State, and Jan Stenerud for Montana State. Both went on to be Hall of Famers. Well, Vinatieri will be in a few years because he kicked till he's almost 50 years old. This ball kicked into the end zone and South Dakota State will get it at the 25. Coming up at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific over on ABC. Quarterback Logan Bonner and wide receiver Devin Tompkins lead Utah State against Oregon State in the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl presented by Steeple it is truly the most wonderful time of the year. It certainly feels like that here. A week away from Christmas, all the snow everywhere the eye can see. What a backdrop to decide who gets to go play for the national championship. Yeah, you said it earlier, Winter Wonderland. We saw a shot earlier. I think Santa's in the stands. Not sure who he's pulling for. You know, Griff, our director, he thinks he's the real deal. Like he, this is the real Santa. This is him. Definitely looks the part. There's no doubt. I'm glad that you know he wore his usual outfit. Yeah, it's I neutral. Mean, that, I think that's him. It's hard to tell who he's pulling for, though, right? Although. It's like a Bobcat fan that he's hanging out with. What is the North Pole? About 10 minutes north of here? That's right. Yeah, it's just one exit up. Bobcat fans have packed this place. Overflow crowd. Oladokun fakes plenty of time and rifles one in there past the 40. What a good ball that was for a first down up to the 42 yard line for 17 yards. Canyon Bauer with just his ninth catch of the season. It's excellent protection up front. And really, Oladokun has had his time. There hasn't been a lot of pressure, not a ton of passing, although more than we would have anticipated coming into this game, his fifth attempt. He's now five of five, four different receivers for the Jackrabbit offense. Yeah, they do, Alyssa, and uh, Yankee, Yankee, unable to make the catch there. These guys are studs, Alyssa. Yeah, Pierre Strong said they're the hardest working people you'll ever be around. Chris Oladokun said every single snap they play with an extra chip on our, their shoulder, keeping them clean, him and the backs. He said if they get tackled even one time, all five of them are running over to pick us up and make sure we're good to go and are ready for blood on the very next play. So you can tell they love running behind these guys. <laughs> you love hearing that, Stench. I give credit where credit's due, and I love the fact that they're doing it. You know, the, both their bookend tackles. Excellent. You see the shift now, a direct snap. Direct snap to Davis, and Isaiah is past the 45, right at the 45. It'll be third down from there. Trey Webb on the tackle. All the coaches, the coordinators, the head coaches, all said it comes down to Montana State's defensive front against South Dakota State's offensive line. On a third and seven here, let's watch Daniel Hardy for Montana State. He'll be at the top of your screen on the line trying to get to Oladokun. This is the down and distance the Jackrabbits want to stay out of. Dump off, what a catch by Kraft in traffic and look at the big man go inside the 20. First down, Jackrabbits. What a perfect play call. You're anticipating pressure. We talked about it on the call. Offensive coordinator X said, look, we know they get exotic on third and long. How about a middle screen to your quote unquote freak at tight end in Tucker Craft? And boy, did he show it. How about the speed demonstrated by big number 85 after the catch? to not only run away from defenders, but to get separation running down the sideline. What a huge conversion. 38 yards, you can see why he's an All-American. Three catches for 63 yards. Rudy Voss is in at quarterback with Michael Morgan blocking in front of him and Voss on a design run, playing the Malott role. Gets down to the 13-yard line. Rudy has run it. 12 times for 91 yards on the season and a touchdown. Boss staying 
in the game now. So two out of the last three plays where you see someone else getting the snap from center. It was a wildcat look and now Voss in there at quarterback as a runner on that previous snap. Freshman from Lakefield, Minnesota, staying on the field. On a second and six, he fakes the run, throws over the head of Kraft. Man, he had him too. You can see why they don't ask him to throw the football much. He's one for four passing. And they had him. You're right. Kraft had snuck just past the line of scrimmage. They're trying to sell that quarterback power. Just not enough. See him how he turned Kraft around. If that ball is over his inside shoulder where he was looking, it's six. And instead, Kraft had to spin all the way around. The ball was thrown outside. Would have been a sure touchdown. Put the passer back in. Chris Oladokun on a third and six. Oladokun, nice ball, and it's caught by Yonke diving to the end zone. Touchdown. Oladokun's pass is complete to number nine, Jaden Yonke. Touchdown, Jack Rabbits. The Jack Rabbits take the lead with one of the Yonke twins. This is Jaden. 13 yards. And once again, nice protection by the Jackrabbit offensive front. Yonke starts on the right side of the formation. He's got time to come all the way across the football. Ball's a little bit behind him, and Jeffrey Manning again coming up from his safety position. A couple of missed tackles in this game had a chance to stop him short. Instead, with the extra point. 14 to 10 Lynn lead what a drive by the Jackrabbits coach Stig's team wants to get back to Frisco they're in a good one with Montana State in Bozeman today beautiful Saturday here in Bozeman Alyssa Lang does not believe this but the temperature's actually gone up a bit it was near zero the last couple of days. Stints drove all over this area of the country. Time to slide down the hill. Look at the ball control we have seen. This has been a battle in the trenches to be expected. A game that certainly could go 60 minutes before we decide a winner. Yeah, as good as these teams can run the football on the ground, we've seen some explosive plays in the passing game. None bigger. Then the screen pass to Kraft on that third and long to set up the touchdown. Elijah Elliott with the fair catch. Montana State coming back on offense with Tommy Malott at quarterback. He's only thrown it seven times. He's carried it 12 times for 58 yards. Asked to do just about everything today. Remember, this guy was a catch-all type of player for Brent Vegan in his offense throughout the regular season, really like a Taysom Hill. He did everything on special teams. Yeah. He played receiver, he was in the backfield, played some quarterback in a run, in a, a short yardage situation. Then Matthew McKay entered the portal at the end of the regular season after he started every game in the regular season at quarterback. And your postseason quarterback is this guy, and he finds a wide open pickering into South Dakota State Territory. How about that play? South Dakota State, they get a little creative offensively on their drive. How about this one? Looks like a zone read. Instead, he got a great, nice, nice pull read on that one. Ends up dumping it to Pickering downfield. 33 yards on a nice little pump fake by Malott there to get it to the sophomore from Sunburst, Montana. Now Malott takes off and runs and breaks tackles. And he has another first down, down to the 30. 12 more for the true freshman. The more Q power looks now in this game. We were wondering, you know, how are you gonna get Malott as the inside runner? Because typically, that's Afonso, the guy that's not available in this game. He's usually the inside runner. That time Malott able to get downhill. And the reason they waited until the postseason to make this change is because Coach Vegan felt an extra week would serve him well. 
almost snapped it and got an offsides call, but the Jackrabbits don't come across. Malott doesn't like what he sees down the field and takes off and gets eight or nine more. So hard to bring down, but they thought Stinch, with the fact that they got that bye in the playoffs, that gave him 10, 12 days and a bunch of practices against each other to adjust to having a new starting quarterback. Yeah, and they said they felt as if throughout the season that it, this was an eventuality. This was imminent. It was just a timing issue. When would he ultimately be the first one to take the snaps? Interesting that it happened in the playoffs, but so far it has paid dividends like it did on that last snap on blocked up front. His mobility extends the play to pick up positive yards. That's Elliott standing next to Malott. And Tommy keeps it again. They're chanting his name, and he's got a first down, make it a first and goal inside the 10, marked down to the four. Alyssa, this guy is doing it all. Yeah, and if you're watching Montana State for the first time, you might be going a freshman quarterback starting for the first time in the postseason a couple of weeks ago. We talked to Coach Vegan about how that changed the play calling. He said, it really didn't. We can even be more creative. He's so smart. He knows the playbook so well. Really good at understanding and setting protection as well, which allows them to be more free offensively. And not to mention, of course, the speed. We've been able to see that on display today. No question. And good decision making so far from the true freshman. Great block that time by another true freshman in Elijah Elliott to get Malat to the edge. Moves two tight ends and a running back to the left. He follows him wide open for the touchdown. Malat shifts the protection, and they move to earth in front of him. Great job by the front, and an even more impressive job by Jahari Martin. But watch the puller, set the edge. Jahari Martin, the lead blocker, and Malat with the walk-in touchdown. Quite the answer by the Bobcats. Both teams, no points on the opening drive. They've scored on five straight possessions. Now it's Montana State back on top. Montana State has 262 total yards. Tommy Malott has 249 of them. The guy has done it all at quarterback so far in the postseason, not just today, but two weeks ago on this field against UT Martin. And last week, he goes and beats the defending national champion, Sam Houston, throwing, running, and catching. Oh, okay. Tom Cruise, Tom Brady, Tom Malott. I like it. It's a natural progression. Yonke from the four with a flag down gets up to the 25. Whistles everywhere, flag came in late. During the return, holding, receiving team number 57. 10 yard penalty, the first down. Jack Rabbits will be backed up. Coming next, coming up next over on ESPN, the bold quadruple header rolls on with Eastern Michigan and Liberty in the Lending Tree Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. And we cap the day with the 23rd ranked Raging Cajuns and the Marshall Thundering Herd in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Both games are also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Bobcat fans are not just in the stands, they're outside the stadium, and all of them are yelling at Chris Oladokun, who hands off to Pierre Strong, and he gets nothing. Simeon Woodard. True freshman, triggers into that backfield almost immediately. Coming from the perimeter. Nice piece of tackle. You see him right there. There's no way to dig him out. He already had inside leverage on Jackson Yankee. Couldn't get inside on him. That's a free hitter. And it was right at the point of attack. That was the perfect call into that offensive play. Again. It's Strong, and Strong gets ahead. He gets close to eight yards. 
you got to love John Stigelmeyer, the head coach at South Dakota State. Great. You stopped us on first down. Guess what I'll do? I'll do it again. Run it right at you. Never abandons the run. Believes in his team, especially that offensive front. And we'll see what Coach Stig and offensive coordinator Jason Eck draw up here on the third and two. They got a heavy formation into the boundary. And it's a snap that goes to an up back. It was Tucker Kraft who picked up the football, lined up under center. How about that? A little trickeration from Stig and Coach Eck to get the first down. Well, they've been dialing it up. Yeah, the creativity, even in the last drive. So watch Kraft. He comes from the end of the last scrimmage. Looks like he's got a motion. And he kind of ca caught the Bobcats. You see both linebackers, they're kind of looking to see, is he going to reset? Is he going to trade all the way across the formation? And instead, quick, under center, able to get that snap and an easy first down on the sneak. Now more conventionally, it's Davis, and he gets up to the 34-yard line. It's important to be objective in life, Stinch, but this is a fact. John Stigelmeyer is one of the best people in college football. Anybody that's ever met him would certainly agree with that. 25th year as the head coach, 185 wins. He just signed a new contract extension this week. He's the definition of being where your feet are. Oladokun throws, and it's caught up at the 44-yard line by Zach Hines. And that's another first down. What do you make of what Stig's done with his program? Hey, you know, it's the consistency at which he's been able to put together a championship caliber program and how he's gone about doing it. Ola Doken with the offense moving quickly, gets up to the 48. First time in this game where we saw Daniel Hardy move Ola Doken off his spot, forced him to scramble. Did you talk to that coaching staff at South Dakota State? All these guys talk about it, how much they have learned from coaching and being on this staff and around the culture that's been built opposite North Dakota State. You're talking about one of the most consistent winning programs at the FCS level. I love the beard too. It's been growing since the South Dakota loss. He was so upset. He doesn't cuss. He just yells, holy nutmeg every time he gets mad. He was so mad he grew a beard and he hadn't cut it since. And the Jackrabbits haven't lost since. Oladokun fakes it. Gets out of the pocket. And he gets up near the 50-yard line. It's going to be third and a couple from there, Rylan Ort forcing Oladokun out of bounds. A lot of time leaked off of the clock before that snap. Now you're under a minute on this third down. We've already seen it earlier where they were able to pick up on a third, four plus, five plus. This isn't as long as the last third that they converted on the middle screen to Kraft, but not a comfort zone versus the Montana State defense that can get very creative. Look as you see, Amandre Williams at the top. It is a first down for Ola Doken staying on his feet down to the 35 yard line. 16 yards by the one newcomer on this offense this season. A kid from Tampa played at Sanford. He's handling the elements really well. Andre Williams was a spy. Number three, see him? Missed that tackle right in the middle of the screen. They had he and Daniel Hardy to the same side of the formation. Williams didn't even rush. He was there purely for the scramble. And Oladokun able to break that tackle and get the first down. You see last play written on the back of the helmet. That last one gives the Jackrabbits new life. Oladokun off his back foot. Man, he had Bauer, but it looked like Eric Zambrano may have messed up Bauer's vision a bit. Second and 10. There's no doubt he had it. But you mentioned it, Zambrano, just enough. Seems able to elevate that left arm up and disrupt. You're looking to try to pick up another big positive. You're going for the throat right there, see if you can't pick it up. Tucker Kraft to that side of the formation as well. This time, he's to the right side of the line, just off the hip of the right tackle, and is now motioning into the boundary. 
dumps it off in traffic, and that was Jackson Yonke, the intended target. But there were Bobcats everywhere. It's third down. Back to the screen game. Had great success with it earlier. That time they had hit it to Kraft. This time trying to jam it in there to Yonke. Third and 10. Last time we saw this was that middle screen to the tight end. But so far, South Dakota State's done a great job of protection, able to hold up. Cole Fromm can kick it from here. They're in his range to kick a field goal on the 11th play of the drive. Oladokun gets rid of it and tackled right at the line of scrimmage is Davis by Jeffrey Manning Jr. It's fourth down with 25 seconds left in the half. The clock is running. Let's see if Coach Stig will wait yeah. until there's just a few seconds left and bring Fromm onto the field. Nothing to lose at that point, but that time, they talked about all week. It's the big games, the stunts and twists that Montana State can employ on a passing down. They've done a great job of protection, but they did not trade off the stunt that time. They moved Oladokun off his spot. That affected that play and its ability to pick up positive yards, make this a more makeable kick, or even perhaps convert. I can feel Alyssa's eye roll as I say this, but the elements aren't that much of a factor today. The wind is not up. The temperature's actually increased to almost 30 degrees. So this certainly is within Cole Fromm's range. He made a 54 yarder earlier this season. In fact, he's made three from 50 plus. Let's see if Coach Vegan calls one. He's got all three of his timeouts. He does. State. I guess the Their goal is to nine. ice the kicker in case the uh, elements aren't doing that for you. Alyssa, how cold is it I'm, on the field I'm, right I'm now? I'm glad you were standing next to me when you said it's not that bad because there were some bad words maybe going through my mind when you said that. It's cold down here. You guys are behind like three inches of glass. The windows uh, are open, Alyssa. Yeah, sure, there's sure, a, sure. Yeah, there's a net in front of us right there. It's like a screen. It's you know? cold, but the beautiful snow, the mountains, and a heck of a football game make up for it right now. No doubt. Let's see if Cole Fromm, the transfer from Nebraska, can connect from 51 yards. Snow's not melting. We haven't gotten above freezing yet. Fromm's kick has plenty of leg, and it is good. Right where we want it, right? 17 apiece at the break. What a first half that was. Fromm makes his fourth kick from 50 plus. And remember, the Jackrabbits do get the football yes. to start the second half. So big three points there for Coach Stig as they go to halftime. And Alyssa is on the field. Coach, heck of a half from your young quarterback so far. What do you want to see in the second? Well, we just got to get them off the field defensively. I know uh, offensively we've been able to move the ball. Tommy's playing well. He's making things happen. Defensively, we got to tackle better for sure. I think that'd be the top priority. What will be the adjustments you make defensively at half? Well, I just think we got to challenge our guys. You know, it's not a bunch of calls. It's not those type of things. We just got to make some plays. South Dakota State's got good skill players. We got to we got good skill players too. We just got to make those plays in open space. Thanks, coach. Okay, thank you. Brent Vegans had the best first season any Montana State coach has ever enjoyed. Now he's trying to get his team to the national championship game. Tied with South Dakota State at the break. One half to decide who will play the Bison of North Dakota State in the national championship game in three weeks. Tied up at 17 apiece. And for some reason, since we came to Montana, I've grown a few inches and I'm taller than the All-American Matt Stinchcomb. Alyssa Lang's on the field. I'm Taylor Zarzer. These are two of the best defenses in all of college football at the FCS level, Stinch. 
they've gotten pushed around by these offenses. Well, the offense have enjoyed a lot of success in this game outside of two open possessions, right? When you start the game, Montana State, they punt. South Dakota State, they get into scoring position, get stuffed on a fourth and one. Otherwise, it's been these offenses trading blows. Pierre Strong able to get that rushing game going for South Dakota State on the ground, something that we anticipated. And then they were able to close out the first half with that made field goal to knot things up on the scoreboard. And of course, the Jackrabbits get the ball back first here in the second half. But Tommy Mallott, who we knew had to play a huge role for the Bobcats, boy, he's answered the bell so far. He's been terrific in the last play, a four yard touchdown run. There's actually a picture in the stadium of Tom Brady next to Tom, Tommy Mallott. Tommy Brady would tell you that the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half is where the game really is won or lost. Like you said, it's a critical moment here for the Jackrabbits to take the lead as they'll get the football at the 18. What did Coach Stig have to tell you, Alyssa? You guys mentioned it. Both head coaches not super happy with their defense. I asked Coach Stig what his emphasis was at halftime. He said, I told our defense we have to cut down on those explosive plays. Our quarters have to go up and make a play on the football. He said, offensively, we're doing a pretty good job so far, but unsurprisingly, he said, we got to continue to open up those holes to run the football. Temperatures in the 20s all day. We haven't had any snow. There is a front north of us and south of us. We'll see if we can dodge that in the second half. Got a bunch of winter weather all week here in the 41st state in the union, Montana. Ola Doken on the run, moves the pocket. Nice ball and a great catch made by Jaden Yonke taking the hit too from Eric Zambrano. First down, Jackrabbits. The Yaki twins have paced the passing attack largely for the Jackrabbits offense, certainly throughout the first half. They come out throwing to open up this possession. And once again, able to convert the sticks in the passing game. Both these teams going into half, having gained more yards in the air than on the ground. Big tight end Tucker Kraft was great in the first half. He goes in motion. And it's strong following Kraft in that right side of the line. And he gets about three. Troy Anderson, the all-world linebacker, makes the tackle for Montana State. Strong and Davis combining for over 100 yards rushing so far. Although Isaiah Davis has not been very effective today. Davis just with 11 yards rushing. Strong. At the long touchdown run of 44 yards. And he's on the field here on a second and six. Ola Doken trying to find Hines. Instead just bounces it into his bench. Third and six. A little chippy there at the end of the play. Garrett Greenfield, number 74. And Daniel Hardy having a little discussion how things went on that previous snap. Nowhere to go with the ball downfield. Oladokun wisely dumping that football. Now the question will be, we've seen them able to convert. Screen game, a scramble there towards the end of the first half by Oladokun. But this is the down where Montana State has been able to affect the passer. They haven't gotten the outcome that they've wanted. Four of six on third down so far for the Jackrabbits. Oladokun wants to take off, finally gets rid of it, and Kraft breaks a tackle and gets the first down. Zambrano was there. Kraft was maybe the fifth option on the play, and by just being as large and physical as he is, moves the chains. It's backyard football. You know, protection ends up breaking down. Still nowhere to go with the ball. Oladoka does a good job of staying alive, and Kraft was calling for it in the middle of the field. Zambrano, he just bounces off of Kraft. How physical number 85 is. We saw the speed earlier on the screen, and once again on third down, it's the tight end of the Jackrabbits that bails out the offense. Somewhere Dallas Goddard is watching this game saying, yep, tight ends, Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. Pierre Strong 
runs ahead to the midfield where Amandre Williams makes the tackle. You know, Jason Eck, the offensive coordinator for South Dakota State, told you that Kraft may be further along than Goddard was through his first two seasons in college. Yeah, he's talking about just physical from a skill set standpoint, where he is right now. He felt as if he was set up even better. See Dallas Goddard, obviously incredibly talented, moved on to the next level. Eck was talking about how he thinks Kraft is probably even more gifted, maybe not from a football instinct standpoint. That'll come. Isaiah Davis back in, and Davis gets a couple. It's going to be third and two. Maybe they look for Kraft again here, Alyssa. Yeah, one of my favorite, one of my favorite moments from our meetings this week was when Coach Eck looked at Stinch and said, "Where'd you play again?" And Stinch said, oh, "I played at Georgia." He was like, "Yeah, you could drop Tucker Kraft on the field at Georgia, and no one would know a difference." And I can confirm from standing down here, also having had done a couple of Georgia games this year, that you would not notice one bit of a difference when you look at the size on that guy. Yeah, he's big and pretty, man, and he's really made his presence felt in this game. He blew out the formation on this third and short. There he goes across the formation to the right side and Davis follows him and he's not going to get there. They blow it dead even though he wasn't down on the ground. And it's going to be fourth and a yard and a half, maybe two. Ben Seymour credited with the tackle. progress was stopped at the 48 yard line. It'll be fourth So see Kraft coming across the formation. They're trying to run it right up the middle and a great job. Look at that anchor right in the middle of the defense by Ben Seymour. And 98 for the Bobcats made that play possible. And once again, short yardage defense by the Bobcats coming up big. And Isaiah Davis, who is a physical runner, gets denied. How cold could Hunter Dustman be right now? The punter for South Dakota State makes his first entrance onto the field. Fair catch by Patterson way inside the five yard line. That's a mistake. Montana State is backed up at their own four. Dustman says, I'm warm. I'm ready to go. What a game this is. You know, my daughter and I are going to go skiing about an hour south here tomorrow. This makes me nervous right here. Oh, no. Stuck the landing, though. She stopped sliding. She's fine. Yeah, it'll be, look, bounce right up. She, I, I guarantee she went right back up there again. Yeah, you get, gotta get back on the uh, disc. Elijah Elliott standing in the middle of his end zone next to Tommy Malott, the quarterback for Montana State. For the Bobcats fielded on their own four. Malott will throw. Nice ball to Lance McCutcheon. Right at the first down marker and a flag comes in at the end of the play. Don Gardner, who they've been going after repeatedly. A couple of 50 50 balls, and now this one to get a first down coming out. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense number 21. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. Kind of bails out the Bobcats after the bad decision on the punt return. McCutcheon clearly in the field of play. I don't know. I mean, it feels like he's just finishing the play. I'm kind of with the defender on that one. It didn't look egregious. It's like you said, though, 25 yards on that play with the penalty. Instead of being at the four, now they're at the 29. And Malat wants to throw again, but instead will tuck it and run. And that nice lateral quickness again catches up to him as he is run out of bounds by Jackrabbits. It'll be second down. Once again, though, Montana State doing a great job of managing poor field position. Able to get out of the shadows of their own goal post so they can get into their regular field offense. So you're not in that coming out offense where you're just trying to gain breathing room. Graham Spalding showing off the speed there for the Jacks on defense to limit the play to four. Malott on a design keeper, banging into more Jacks. He gets about five where Kale Reeder makes the tackle to be third and a long one. Really well blocked by Ma Montana State. And, you know, they didn't make a living in these type of calls. This is a function of the injury to Afonzi at running back. 
spending a lot more on the quarterback power game, getting pullers around and allowing Malott run inside. Did he get that? I don't know. It, Malott keeping it himself, but he didn't get a lot of movement into the into the line, and we'll see where this is marked. It's fourth down. You're right. It wasn't a ton of push. Coach Vegan, in both offenses now, reminiscent of how the first half started, right? Well, you both had empty possessions, and then the offenses found their footing. Both defenses were challenged coming here in the second half, and it looks clear that he is short on that third down attempt. Bryce Layton's second punt, a line drive. Yonke's going to have to let it go. And now South Dakota State will be backed up. This rolls all the way down to the seven-yard line. It's a 55-yard punt. The team scored on six consecutive possessions. Now the defenses have shown up. Still tied at 17. Thousands have been affected by southern and midwest tornadoes. If you would like to help, please visit redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond and help people recover from this disaster. They provided approximately 200 additional blood products to hospitals in response to these devastating tornadoes, primarily in Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. Our hearts are with you. Pierre Strong. Doesn't get much, but stays on his feet before he's pushed out of bounds. Up near the nine yard line, he is strong. This all American tailback, the finalist for the Walter Payton Award, finished fifth in the voting. And they, they were concerned about him after the concussion. Yeah. Or he, they put him in the protocols, I should say, in the victory against Villanova. He got through all of it. He has been a horse so far today. A big run, obviously, to open up the scoring for the Jackrabbits. At that time, would have been a negative yardage play. Just shakes off a would-be tackle for positive yards. Now it's Isaiah Davis, who was terrific last week. He's been stopped today. He doesn't get much there as Trey Webb makes the tackle. It's going to be third and long for South Dakota State. And that's usually a play for Strong. He's more the outside runner, but Strong's got some type of an equipment issue. He's on the sideline, his shoe popped off. That's part of the way, reason why he was able to break that tackle. He pulled his foot right out of his shoe, picked up three or four yards. But you can see now back-to-back -back plays where he missed it, they just got his shoe back on. He's frustrated too, he wants to be out there. Instead, Davis is back there. Dump off again, this time Kraft is stopped for no, oh, maybe a yard, it's Troy Anderson. The all-world linebacker for Montana State. It's three and out for the Jackrabbits. How about that? Fool me once. You're not gonna get number 15 too many times on the same look. Last time, it was brilliantly called. Kraft took it for a big gainer. This time, negligible, if any gain at all. Anderson was all over it. See him saying that, not on my watch. That time, big number 85 gets denied and now Dustman from the middle of his end zone runs up and kicks this one nice bounce for the Jackrabbits inside the 35 man what a weapon Dustman has been on both of these punts that is a 57 yard punt by the sophomore from East Bethel Minnesota still tied up I like that old school uniforms in the house today. Here awesome. between Montana State and South Dakota State, it is time to eat like a champion. We're going to McKenzie River Pizza Company. And after this play, we're gonna eat some, uh, the rancher, I believe. And oh. the also, uh, Alyssa's got one on the field. She'll tell us uh, what she has in, in just a moment. We like to do this each and every week during our show, Tommy Malott, a quarterback for the Bobcats has been terrific today. And he's gonna plow ahead for a few. Alyssa, what do you, what do you have down there? I have the Stockman, which as I open it, it looks like 
Bacon, pepperoni, oh, this looks delicious. Cold pizza, too. I'm living my best college life. <laughs> That's great. I want to know what kind of woodland creature died on your head. What is that that you're wearing? I mean, when in Rome, that right? That's very or rude. Or Montana. Very rude. Alyssa no, Ford not yours, you Alyssa. <laughs> Taylor, you, you have an appropriate headwear, whereas Taylor has a very disturbing, I don't know what it used to be. A lot across the middle. And that's caught for a first down it almost into South Dakota State Territory. It's Willie Patterson. Right over the middle. So you see him a lot on the run. First with his legs. Now with his arm. Able to kind of jump start this offensive possession. And one that took over further upfield than it should have. Some punt return adventures in this game. Malott throws, and it's McCutcheon wide open. He's down near the Montana State 35, South Dakota State 35. That's going to be there this game. Don Gardner is not going to get beaten deep by McCutcheon. It's twice now that came back to it. You see it off the play action, excellent protection. Gardner's playing off, making sure that McCutcheon doesn't get hip to hip with him. That 50-50 ball. That's advantage, Montana State. He's going to keep some separation. That throw is going to be there. Down to the Jack Rabbits 35. Malott keeps changing his mind and it eventually dives ahead for four yards. It all comes down to this, the college football playoff semifinals, Friday, December 31st on ESPN and the ESPN app. Heisman winner Bryce Young and number one Alabama take on number four Cincinnati in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic at 3.30 Eastern. Then it's number two Michigan and number three Georgia in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Bearcats, the first group of five team to make the playoff. Wolverines first playoff, dogs back for the first time in four years and the Tide playing in their seventh playoff in just eight seasons of this event. Of course, the national championship is January 10th on ESPN. Malott, he just rolls ahead, taking all of his momentum for another Montana State first down. And I'll tell you what, Stinch, if those CFP semifinals are anywhere as close to as competitive as last night's game yeah. and today's FCS semifinal. We're in for some good ones. You're not good. I mean, when you think about it, Alabama's like the North Dakota State of the FBS. Some of these dynastic programs. Malott carrying the mail all day today. 188 yards passing, 124 yards rushing. Over 300 total yards for him. Very rarely does he get rid of the football. He does here, and he simply throws it out of bounds, living to see another play. Heavy pressure in the backfield by Cade Trevere. A couple times we've seen Trevere pop up. That time really affecting Malott and his ability to set his feet and flip his hips to get that ball downfield. He wanted McCutcheon, it looked like. Garner had rolled up. He's tight in the line of scrimmage. Looked as if he was going to look for another 50-50 deep. Instead, ended up having to just heave it out of bounds. Bobcats in position to take the lead back with just over three minutes to go in the third quarter. Malott with a big fake. And he gets down inside the 18-yard line where Adam Bach makes the tackle. A lot of, they're getting a lot of yardage, a lot of it out of this Q power look. That's how he kind of fakes the toss to Elijah Elliott. Be surprised if they don't move the pocket again with Malott. They tried it a second earlier. They're able to get him out on the edge. It allows him to tuck it and run it if need be. Right now they got that formation to the right. See if they run play action and run him and roll him out to the right side. Instead, he's in a muddy pocket. He gets out of there. Watch out. He can use his legs. First down. Wow. Just incredible athleticism by this true freshman from Butte, Montana. Reese Winkleman was all over it. And they might have gotten away with one. Elijah Elliott was blocking 
Malik Lofton. Watch late. Malik Lofton comes in on the edge pressure. Wow, you see those arms spun up in the air? White hat's right on top of it. No flag. Boy, he spun Lofton completely around on that play. No flag con called on Elliott, and Elliott and Malott look over to Brent Vegan. Play clock running down, and a lot of confusion. Montana State. Elijah the Elliott, you talk about him, you got two true freshmen in your offensive time. backfield. That time, Elliott, he didn't know whether or not he was supposed to be emptying out of the backfield or not. Malott looked like he was unclear as to what the alignment should have been at that point. Obviously, you don't want to forfeit. Look, you're in the red zone. You've already opened up this half with empty possessions, both sides. Fantastic scoring opportunity here, a fresh set of downs. Make sure that you've got the alignment correct. When you think about back to that first half and the turnovers, I mean, wow. I mean, how, how much married, more married can these two teams be? Same number of plays, a little bit more explosive for Montana State. Scores tied. They've had the ball about the same amount of time. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for Malott in the Bobcats from around the 13 yard line. Malott takes it out of Elliott's body and he gets down to the 10 where Thomas Stacker makes the tackle. Remember, these are two programs. Uh-oh, an injury there with Willie Patterson. Patterson, the junior from Tacoma, Washington. He's, he's, he's the guy that threw the touchdown pass to Malott last week against Sam Houston and then caught one from him on the next drive. Yeah, just runs into McCutcheon there. Like it kind of clipped his left, it was left ankle or his calf. Hard to tell what it was. Definitely a lower leg injury. It looked like the way he was grabbing. Kind of hobbled around for a little bit before going down. Remember, these are two programs that lost to arch rivals towards the end of the regular season. Montana State losing over in Missoula to Montana. South Dakota State lost to South Dakota. Rough days, and you're, and you're wondering where these teams would go from here. What they've done is each have won out, and now they're in this hardly fought, contested battle to try to get to the FCS National Championship game. Amazing job to forget about that and focus on what's in front of you. No question. A lot of football. A lot of football been played by South Dakota State, especially having participated in the spring season. Jahari Martin is standing next to Malat. He follows him, and Malat stays on his feet and gets down inside the five to near the four. Man, he is taking some hits, but as Coach Vegan told you before the game, Stench, this true freshman can handle it. Well, he's a physical runner, there's no doubt. So they got a little G scheme. Play side guard, pulls and kicks out the edge defender. You've got lead blockers up inside. That's the same play that they ran on the touchdown run earlier by Malott. That time able to get it to third and short. They can get a first down on the 11th play of the drive if they get it to the three. And Malott is right at there, that mark. You know, effectively, it's like a QB sneak more than it is a draw, but out of the shotgun. First and goal. And enough to convert. Well, that's the surprising part about Tommy Malott. He's not a physically imposing guy. He obviously has speed. We've seen him in space. But I've been really impressed in this game with how physical he has been between the tackles. He's needed to be because their usual inside runner not available in a Fonzie. 27 carries today for 144 yards rushing. You would think number 28 is coming up. Maybe take a shot up top. Extra effort.
touchdown. Six feet, not even 200 pounds, playing high school football this time last year in Butte. Comes to Bozeman, says, I'll do anything you want for this football team. I'll block, I'll tackle, I'll catch passes, I'll throw them, and I'll give extra effort as your starting quarterback in the playoffs to give the Bobcats the lead at the end of the third quarter. Six minutes and 29 seconds he took off the clock on a 12-play drive. And Blake Glessner gives Montana State a seven-point cushion as we go to the fourth quarter. Montana State trying to play for the national championship for the first time since 1984. Tommy Millad and Montana State a quarter away from meeting North Dakota State for the national championship in three weeks. The Bison knocking off JMU last night in the Fargo Dome. That's January 8th here on ESPN2 at noon Eastern down in Frisco. If you're going to play in Texas, as they like to say, you better be able to run the rock. And Malott has been sensational today. Yonke from the one. Up into just past the 20 yard line. Kickoff your week 15 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. They'll go out all access with the NFL sack leader TJ Watt. Steelers trying to keep their playoff hopes alive, plus an inside look at Cowboys rookie Micah Parsons' journey to becoming one of the NFL's premier pass rushers. We got you covered with all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game right up to kickoff in our Week 15 Monday Night Football matchup. NFC North rivalry, Dalvin Cook and the Vikes against Justin Field and the Bears at Soldier Field. Minnesota still very much alive in the NFC playoff hunt. Playing the Bears twice. Remember, it's 8 Eastern on ESPN and on ABC coming up on Monday night. 21-yard line, and there is a pass to, to Yonke, and Yonke gets 21 yards on the first play. Boy, was that big stench given all the noise these Bobcats were making at him. Well, Yonke completely unaccounted for in the coverage. So they run a heavy play action. Made it look like they're going to run it up inside. Instead, they end up flipping it out to Yonke for an easy pickup. A hustle by Ryland or just to get out there. Ola Dokin. Doesn't like what he sees and he gets sacked. It's Amandre Williams there to cover him up. And it's a loss of seven on the play. Really well defended downfield. Watch Eric Zambrano, the top of your screen. Watch Yankee stop. He's a little out and up. A little double move to see if they get him to bite on the out. Instead, Zambrano does a great job of running with Yankee downfield. Look at Santa. I he's lit. He's excited. He's fired concerned. up. Santa is cheering for Montana State. Second and 17, Ola Dokin just dives ahead, might have gotten a couple. Daniel Hardy was about to get to him. It is third and long for South Dakota State. A lot of, lot of throwing right now for South Dakota State opening it up. Obviously, you get that nice gainer from Yonke on the opener. You come back with a shot downfield with a negative yardage. A little bit surprised that we didn't see like a quick handoff, trying to pick up some yards to get back to the original line of scrimmage. This is a dangerous down and distance. This is where Montana State has been able to get their pressure. They're showing the pressure look now. Both linebackers up in the A-gaps. Ola Dokin steps into it. It's intercepted. Picked off by Simeon Woodard.
That is his fourth interception of the season, and boy, is it a big one. It wasn't necessarily the pressure. They showed the pressure, a big game up front. Protection held up pretty good. He presses up in the pocket. He just doesn't get enough on this football. Trying to get it to Canyon Bauer, it looked like. And Simeon Woodard was right underneath that. Almost like he was, looked almost as if he was the intended receiver. Tucker Kraft was not on the field on that play stench. Instead, Oladokun had to go somewhere else, and he pays the price. Now, can Tommy Malott put the Jackrabbits away? It's Elliott, and he plows ahead for a couple. Tommy Malott has all but 15 total yards today for Montana State. The team on the day has 351 and he's got 336 either passing or rushing. So a play like that you see to Elliott is quite rare. Well, Elliott was the only other one that's generated any yards in the outside of the passing game. Well, he gets that inside carry and now a loaded backfield with two backs in there with Tommy Malott. Jahari Martin joins Elliott in the backfield. Malott taking a big hit. Coming around the edge is Reese Winkleman. He beat the offensive lineman and he forces third and long. And if he doesn't, he's another big gainer. Great job by Winkleman. That time they get up, got upfield almost immediately. It's Winkleman with the negative yardage play. The first is forces third and long. We've seen both quarterbacks find ways to extend the possession even when under pressure. Now the key is don't make a big mistake, just like what you saw from South Dakota State's quarterback in Oladuka. Malat on third and 11, throws. <laughs> Caught! Nate Stewart wrestles the football away from the defender. And Montana State's in the red zone. 50-50 ball. We saw this almost exclusively from Montana State last week versus Sam Houston State. Once again, size advantage. 6-2 for Nate Stewart, fighting for his quarterback for the big catch. 24 yards to get Montana State back in the red zone. Martin wasn't even ready for the play. And instead, it's still a touchdown. Lance McCutcheon beats Gardner for the football. Some of the Bobcats offensive players didn't even know the ball had been thrown. Martin, look at Martin. Yeah, Jahari Martin was looking at the defense. No, it looked like. And it might have just been a quick now snap. Look at Tommy Malott. Look out there and sees the matchup that he likes. 31-17, Montana State with 10 and a half to go. So two throws to give your receiver a chance, and you win both times. And Tommy Malott's feeling it. This is the largest deficit South Dakota State has faced all season long. Montana State Bobcats trying to eat jackrabbits for lunch here on ESPN2. Anyone you ask here in Bozeman will say this is the biggest game Montana State's played in 37 years at home since they won the national championship back in 1984. And they can feel it up two touchdowns with 10.35 left. Jack Rabbits get it down two touchdowns. They have not been able to stop the quarterback, Tommy Malott, today. No matter what he's doing, throwing or running. He's done it all except for catch, and he did that last week, so who knows what else he's got in him. 
this one. Open up that passing scoring anyway, gets it downfield. Then gets a nice block on the edge, picks up a gainer, then battles his way into the end zone. That time walks his way in. The blocking has been excellent. And how about this power? Tommy Malat showing some speed and some trust. His receivers have certainly justified it here in the second half. They go back to the ground, and Pierre Strong didn't like what he saw to the left. He tried the right. Troy Anderson was there. It's a pickup of two. How about that? That's crazy. 16 yards that he's not responsible for today. Thank goodness Elijah Elliott's out there to take the load off the young man. Strong again. Not much. Maybe two more. It'll be third and six for the Jackrabbits with 10 minutes and counting. Last possession, three straight passes. Results in an interception, it goes the other direction. A couple of runs, can they convert on this third down to hold up? Oladokun, nice ball, first down throw to Jackson Yonke. Excellent protection. Up slipping down middle of the defense by Montana State. Kind of slowed down their ability to pressure. Oladokun with a strike. Oladokun 14 of 19 today. Make it 14 of 20 as he throws behind Davis. Second and 10. They had the matchup that they would have wanted right there. If that ball's in the right spot. Doesn't spin down once again. Spins Davis all the way around. That Callahan O'Reilly out in space. Give your runner a chance to play. Break one tackle. Next thing you know, it's a first down past midfield. Instead, you deal with an incompletion in a second and ten. I mean, he never had a chance. Davis collected by Blake Schmidt and friends. Troy Anderson off the edge right now. He's able to get in the backfield, disrupted the timing of this play. See, Troy Anderson almost takes the handoff. Instead, his teammates make the play. On third and 12, it's Kraft back on the field and getting a first down. How about that matchup? You got Daniel Hardy in coverage, typically a pass rusher. It gets one of the best receiving tight ends in the country. And Kraft, again, huge on third down. Five catches for 74 yards today for Kraft. Davis bounces off a defender. He won't bounce off Anderson. Boy, Troy Anderson is everywhere. There's a reason why he's thought to be one of the best defenders. It's a player of the year, the big sky, 10 tackles. That's game high. He's been all over the field that time. Able to track down and make a tackle in space. Second and nine. Oladokun gets out of there and throws to the sideline. Nice grab sitting on his behind his hinds. Transfer from Washington. And it's a first down. Nice job buying time by Chris Oladokun. Great job of pressing up in the pocket, kept his eyes downfield, did not panic. Job by Zach Hines, giving him a target right there at the sticks. Oladokun and the Jackrabbits have been good on third down. Can they get something going on first? Nope. Strong loses yardage with Sebastian Valdez in the backfield. You nailed it, Taylor. It's the first down efficiency. See if you can't get those positive yards. They talked about it. The players knew it. As you can see, more hurry-up mode over the football for the Jackrabbit offensive front. Oladokun wants it all. It is caught, but out of bounds. Great catch by Yonke, but he couldn't get a foot down as Simeon Woodard, who got that interception a little while ago, was all over it. A good job by Woodard. 
squeezing it towards the sideline. You see Yonke, they're trying to battle a little bit. He just runs out of real estate right there at the pylon. Third and 10 plus. We've seen Oladokun buy time. We've also seen Tucker Craft bail him out. He's the inside receiver on the hash mark at the bottom of the screen. Oladokun sets up a little bubble and it's Yonke who gets down to the 27, but it's going to be fourth and about five. As Simeon Woodard made the tackle. He's in a little huddle now. See Coach Stig. Throughout this drive, they've been over the ball, almost like in a, a hurry up mode, like two minutes. Plenty of time. It's worked well for them. They went for it on the first drive of the game inside the Montana State 10 and didn't get it. Here's their second fourth down try. It's Kraft again on the hash mark. Ola Duncan's in trouble. It's Hardy. Safe to say this is Daniel Hardy's best weekend ever. He graduated yesterday. He's trying to get Montana State to Frisco today. Bobcat Stadium in Bozeman is up for grabs as the Bobcats get off the field on a fourth down play. They could have maybe gone back to their guy who's given them a security blanket and a bailout, Tucker Kraft. They watch him on the hash. To break right behind the head. You see that ball could come out right now. Instead, the pressure from Daniel Hardy at the top of the screen, working against Garrett Greenfield, who's done an excellent job all game long, watching him come back underneath. That pressure, an ultimate sack on Ola Dokin. It's Hardy's 15th sack, graduated yesterday with a marketing degree. I said, what do you want to do with it? He said, play professional football. Love to get to the next level this year. He certainly is headed in that direction. Meanwhile, on offense, it's been the Tommy Malott show. And he gets a couple of first downs. This game's over. And you have to wonder now, so you see that early run, of course. Down two scores, still time. You look at here in the second half. South Dakota State, full slate of timeouts available to them. They were in hurry up mode almost that entire drive until they got to the fourth down. Bobcats have been stellar, not only in short yardage, but in fourth down situations. Pick up from four for Malad, who has 148 yards rushing, 233 yards passing. And he dives ahead to get maybe one more. Coach Stick's team, South Dakota State, into the first half with a couple of touchdowns and a field goal in the second half. Punt, punt, interception, turnover on downs talk about answering the bell defensively both these head coaches said our defenses have to do better you think about what Brent Vegan said we got to tackle better in space we've seen some of that but it's also been their ability to affect the passing and even before the school board started to get away from South Dakota State saw that one drive that one possession three straight passes resulting in that interception it's not over yet if his team can get off the no. field here on a third and five. But can they get Malat down? Yes. Good tackle made there by Reese Winkleman. It'll be fourth down. Reese Winkleman. You said it. Big stop. stop. Got to get the ball back to your offense. South Dakota State. Their first of the half. Maybe a timeout. So we'll take it with them. With 446 left, Coach Stig's going to need a big comeback to get back to Frisco. Four forty-six left to play here in Bozeman, and the Montana State players are getting excited, talking amongst themselves on the sidelines, saying, y'all want to go to Frisco? I want to go to Frisco. Y'all want to go to Frisco? Coach is coming around saying, one more stop, and you're going to Frisco. Get the ball back, and you're going to play for a national championship, guys. Yeah, you can even hear the, the fans who pick up on some of the parab mics down there saying, those goalposts are ours. <laughs> they are coming out there. There's no doubt. They hold on here. That might have been partially blocked. Came after it. It looked like a jackrabbit may have gotten a hand on that latent punt. 
to be a short field, but the Jackrabbits need two touchdowns with 4.40 to go. The NCAA FCS champion will be crowned January 8th in Frisco on ESPN2 at 12 Eastern. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. 440 left in this one where Montana State has a two touchdown lead. Trying to get there to play the Bison. Jackrabbits haven't had a deficit this large all season. Oladokun throws and it's caught at midfield by Yonke. First down into Montana State territory for 14 yards. Now the question will be, if they're going to live in passing mode, can they keep it out of harm's way and stay ahead in the down and distance so they don't get into third and obvious? Oladokun in trouble, just shovel pass ahead. And it's Strong who will get about five, maybe six. Callahan O'Reilly was in the backfield. Pressuring Oladokun there. Clock running, near four minutes left in the game. Oladokun pumps, throws behind Strong. It'll be third down. Clock stopped with 4.01 left. We saw that on the previous one, too. That, that time they only brought three on the previous. The pressure almost got to Oladokun. That time only rushing three was Montana State. Ball too hot and inside for Pierre Strong. Now watch the games inside, the twist that Montana State has been running on their defensive front. The two defensive tackles have been very active. Watch see if they twist on this pass rush. Oladokun looking towards Kraft, throws to him and it's too short, it's too low. Fourth down. Hardy in the backfield again. Hardy coming in on that TE stunt. The tackle was first. Allows the end to wrap inside. Watch 44 come in. Doesn't get quite picked up cleanly until Oladokun has to press up in that pocket. Could not throw a catchable ball to Kraft. He was right at the sticks. This is basically it for the Jackrabbits. It's Yonke who's free, and he's inside the 10, first and goal, South Dakota State. Did Yonke catch that ball cleanly initially? Because Woodard otherwise, I don't know why he ends up out of bounds here. This ball hangs up. He beat Woodard right now. Oh, yeah, he was kind of juggling it. Otherwise, he ends up in the end zone. It looked like if he catches it cleanly, there's nothing to stop it. 35 for Jackson Yonke. Now short, that was a dangerous pass to Davis. Probably better off that he dropped it. Second down. You're exactly right, Taylor. I mean, you think about that. If he catches it, maybe it's negligible gain. But you don't want to tip it up in the air, especially right there in the flats. Yonke catches that ball cleanly. It's a touchdown with three minutes plus to play. You know, as it is, Montana State, yeah, you want to get this stop. You also want to bleed this clock as much as you possibly can in a second goal to go. Ola Duncan's running for his life. Somehow he got rid of that football. The referee was grabbing for his flag. It looked like he got close to the line of scrimmage. That's the question. He was definitely under duress and still in the pocket. Did the ball get past the line of scrimmage? for intentional grounding. Number nine was in the area. Bring it next down. Well, they're saying it doesn't matter. Yonke was close enough to be the intended receiver. Regardless, it was an all-out blitz. Trey Anderson came right up the middle. He's up flushing it back. And I, 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 think that yeah. he, I don't think he understood the line judge. I think the line judge said he got to the line of scrimmage. Up, and then wow. that right guard, Edward Miller, cost him five more. It's start. Offense number 54. Five-yard penalty remains third down. It's largely been a clean game procedurally, even though this is 
as we've said, a more than capacity crowd, and they've been loud, especially on third downs. Clearly, you have two plays to get 13 yards here. How do you do it with 334 left? Well, it's always been the Yankee show, but we can't forget about Kraft. And we think about the previous possession where had he, if he had the time, Kraft was open. You see Tucker Kraft now at the top of the screen. He's going to line up right on the hash mark. We've got two in coverage. Well, Ladokin's going down. It's Hardy again. And the ball's out. Sebastian Valdez got it. Correction. The ruling on the field is that the ball was recovered by South Dakota State, not Montana State. It'll be fourth down. Looking at it again, Valdez was fighting for it. It looked like he jumped on it, but Edward Miller, who committed the penalty on the previous play, might have ultimately ended up with the football here. Timeout, Miller. South Dakota State. Yeah, he won it back. He sure did. This will be a 30-second timeout. I'll tell you what, how about that pass rush by Daniel Hardy? Excellent hands. You know, this is a guy that in his first 26 games here at Montana State, two sacks. Coming into this game, he had 14. He's picked up another three, eight sacks in the last five games, two today. 16 on the year. He's a totally different player in visiting with him yesterday. He said, I've got this new move that I've done that Sean Howe, the defensive line coach, has taught me, and he, he wouldn't divulge too much information into what goes into the move, but you can see it clear as day well, today, Stench. He just used it. I mean, that, that's the one. He just uses just a quick two-hand wipe. He just wipes the hands of the offensive tackle. Garrett Greenfield, he goes to punch. And Hardy just wipes his hands clean. So now it's fourth and goal from the 21 for Ola Duncan and the Jackrabbits. Must score here. And there's movement. Now it's going to be fourth and 26. False start. Offense number nine. Five yard penalty. Well, Jaden Yonke started too early. I guess it's not that big a deal when you have so far to go, but the Jackrabbits need a miracle here to keep this game alive. We saw it on the previous down. Can they even get there this time? Can they hold up in this protection knowing you're right now and they'll call a timeout knowing that this is the season. Timeout. Montana State, their second and a half, 30 second timeout. What an atmosphere this is today, man. Yeah. I mean, we have gone all over the country calling FBS football games and power five leagues for years, the three of us. We finished 2021 here in an FCS environment that is second to none. Well, all of Bozeman, I think, is in or around this stadium right now. Stadium holds 17,777. The attendance is closer to 22,000 today if you include all the people that are around the stadium that aren't sitting down. Yeah, I mean, the fences are lined. You got folks, they don't need a seat. They just want to get in to see this, and it's been a great contest, and it boils down to this play. Ola Dokin and the Jackrabbits need a miracle. He lets it fly. Hail Mary ball. Incomplete. Bobcats came after him. Had enough time to release it. A great job. That's well defended. You got a defender over top, a defender underneath. Ball falls harmlessly to the turf. Montana State won the national championship 
in 1984. Since then, they've had a lot of ups and downs with their football program as the FCS has gone to this big tournament bracket. And it took a true freshman kid from Butte, Montana to come in at quarterback when one of the best tailbacks in school history, timeout, South Dakota, Isaiah State. Afonzi, Their couldn't go today due half. to knee injuries be a 30 second in order timeout. to get them back to the national championship game for the first time in 37 years. Boy, did he step up. I mean, he's done it all offseason. They knew that they had to get it out of their quarterback, and it hasn't just been in his usual M.O. He's thrown the football very well. The decision-making has been excellent. I mean, other than the ball ending up on the turf that he ultimately recovered himself, it's been a fantastic performance by their true freshman, a guy that he's contributed in spots all season, but he has really emerged here at the end of the year. Credit not only the coaching staff in trusting him with this game plan, but also those wide receivers, especially here in the second half. Tommy Brady may own the other 49 states. Tommy Malott owns Montana. Up to the 34 yard line goes Elliott. Jackrabbits are out of timeouts. Nice run by Elliott, by the way, after contact. Two. Pick up another three or four yards to get this to third and short. about what this guy did a couple weeks ago, running for 180 yards against UT Martin, making his debut as a starter in the playoffs. Last week, he throws one, catches one, and runs for one all in the first quarter to beat the big dog, the number one seed, the defending champion, Sam Houston State. And Malat's gonna be stopped at the 35, with 2.20 to go. The NCAA FCS champion will be crowned three weeks from today, January 8th, in Frisco, Texas on ESPN2 at noon Eastern. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Man, Frisco is hosting several bowl games this season, and no disrespect to those games. The FCS National Championship atmosphere they've created in that market is phenomenal. Done a terrific job. No doubt. Great venue. Tremendous venue. You see South Dakota State, everybody up. They came after that last punt. They got a shame. Timeout, Montana State. The you final see time all 11 half. on their punt timeout. team, punt return team, rather, up on the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Come on over here, man. Looks like Kevin, that looks like you, Kevin, trying to park your car earlier. Our, that will be the heavy stuff that's coming down for quite some time. No. Where is he going exactly? I don't think he knows, but Brent Vegan and Montana State know where they're going. They're 98 seconds away from going to Frisco. There's Taylor Housewright, the offensive coordinator. Vegan wants to play his alma mater in the national championship game. Bryce Layton will punt it. Nobody back for the Jackrabbits. And it's down to the 16-yard line. There's Vegan. How about this? A year ago, he was telling us on the field for the game. It, it finished the season. Wyoming's regular season finished in the middle of December due to COVID. He's at Christmas at home. He's wondering what his future is. Jeff Choate, who's the head coach here, decides to join Steve Sarkeesian's staff at Texas. A few weeks later, he's named the head coach at Montana State. And all he's done is have the best first season any head coach has ever had in school history. Pretty remarkable. And considering you know, the injuries, we've already talked about the transition at quarterback. Opting not to participate in the spring season last year, and it's all paid off. Oladokun gets it to Yonke. And these Yonke twins are all hard. That's Jackson.
gets it out past the 30 yard line for 17 yards. Nearly got it out of bounds. Caught it well onto the field and just battled his way to the boundary. The Aki brothers, Tucker Craft, they battled valiantly, there's no doubt. What's been striking is the absence of the run game here in the second half for the Jackrabbits. Minus two rushing yards in the last two quarters. Here's Kraft, and it's a hook and ladder. And Yonke goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Jackson Kraft catches the pass the before that. Jaden catches the lateral from Kraft on that play to get it out near midfield. That's really well executed. Excellent job by both. Not nearly at midfield here, just in those two plays. Just 70 seconds left until South Dakota State season will end, barring a miracle comeback. Oladokun, here's another ladder. This one's not going to work. And the Montana State Bobcats are going to the national championship. More than 20,000 people in one of the biggest games in school history saw this today. And there is Tommy Malott on the sideline, a lifelong Montana boy overwhelmed at what he and his teammates have done today. Just brilliant. A remarkable performance by Tommy Malott. Tucker Rovig gets to put the finishing touches on it. Merry Christmas, Montana State. One of the classiest people in football, John Stigelmeyer congratulates Brent Vegan and he takes a bath. us down there with Brent Vegan. Coach, for the first time since 1984, you host a semi and you win a semi. What does it mean to this program? Well, I'm just so proud of our guys. Uh, you know, they've been through a lot. They didn't play last year. Um, we're right on the doorstep in 19. Wanted to be back in this place and to, to play the way we did today. Just so happy for them. What can you say about your quarterback, the numbers he put up today, and the way he's put this team on his shoulders in the playoff? Well, he's a, he's a tough kid, a playmaker. Um, anything you ask him to do all season, he's done. Just so happy he's playing quarterback now. So, you know, we've we got, we got three weeks now to get him going again. But, uh, yeah, Tommy really played awesome today. What do you think of the way your defense performed in the second half? Well, we knew we didn't tackle well at halftime, and, and I thought our guys just came out, and we got their quarterback un uncomfortable, and that's been our calling call all year. So, you know, Offense, defense, special teams, we got it all done today. Facing North Dakota State for national championship in your first year, what does that mean to you? No, oh, I just look at our guys again. I, you know, for them to get back, they lost in Fargo the last two times in the playoffs, so uh, what an opportunity for them. Uh, we're, you know, we're so excited to be taking this program to another step. A below freezing Gatorade bath, how'd that feel? It felt great, it felt awesome. Congrats, Coach. Brent Vegan gets to play his alma mater North Dakota State in the national championship game in three weeks. Stitch, you said this as we were trying to park our vehicle earlier today. You said that everybody here takes after each other. They look after one another in Montana. 
everyone looked after a true freshman quarterback, Tommy Mallott, today. Yeah, you know, as much as we'll make out of his 384 yards of offense today, they played well around him as well. You know, the time that he was given, the plays that were made, his receivers, we've mentioned, battling for their quarterback to make these catches downfield. The blocking that he received, true freshman stepping up at running back. You're without one of the most prolific rushers in FCS history in Infonzi, and instead you just step up and rally around a true freshman quarterback that, as it's been mentioned, he's done it all for this team this season. He might have to change his name from Tommy Malott to Tommy Montana. He's on the field with Alyssa. Tommy, what does this win mean to you? All these fans here to celebrate. What'd you say? What does this win mean to you? Oh, it means the world. I mean, these guys I've been with for two years now, they've given everything every single day. Man, this year's been hectic. This week's been hectic. The guys came out and just fought. I'm so proud of everyone. Making your first career start in a postseason environment, what has worked for you over the past couple of weeks? Just guys believing in me. It's the guys inside that building right there that really matter. Those guys have believed in me every single day. Uh, just from week one, you know, I was on special teams. Just kept giving me better, more and more opportunities as I grew. You know, they trusted in me when that, that drastic change. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't be more, I couldn't be more blessed. You guys are going to play for a national championship. What's it going to take to win it? It's going to take three weeks to get ready, and we're going to get after those guys. You know, it's just going to be like every other week. That's not, it's nothing special. We're going down to Frisco. We're going to prepare. We're going to be detailed. We're going to be ready to go. Tommy, congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. They didn't have Isaiah Afonze today due to injury. Their left tackle, Lewis Kidd, a 60-year super senior, said, we got this. We pick each other up. We look out on the field. Everyone is lifting each other up in Bozeman today, my friend. You think they're excited? These fans are fired up. They came out in force to support their team. Now they're all booking travel to Texas to contend for a national title. More than 20,000 packed the stands today at Bobcat Stadium. And now most of them will head down to Frisco to play North Dakota State in three weeks for the national championship here on ESPN2. Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang, it is a privilege to work with both of you. I'm Taylor Zarzer for Tom Schofield and our entire crew. What a 